Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph. This watch is available from Chronex.com for €6,500. You can purchase the watch from Chronex.com online, or alternatively in person at their boutiques. All their watches are Chronex certified original by their in-house watchmakers, and all their watches are covered by the Chronex 24-month warranty. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So, the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph comes to this matte black outer cardboard box. One removes the lid to and pulls down the flap, and inside is the watch box itself. So, very similar presentation to Rolex. As you can see, the box is very aesthetically pleasing in matte black, and the interior is nicely fully upholstered in a velour fabric to a high standard. So, very nice presentation and very similar presentation to Rolex. With regards to the other items, this is the guarantee booklet. One also gets this owner's manual, which is a very useful read. This is the plastic warranty card. And as you can see, for security, I've blacked out the serial number, but you can see the reference number of the Black Bay Chronograph. And this is a brand new, unwarm 2021 piece. You can see the date of purchase was the 19th of April 2021. And lastly, one also gets the original price tag. Now, I'm not going to show you the reverse, which has a barcode, the serial number of the piece, for security reasons. So, with regards to the specification of the piece, this is a new release for Tudor for 2021, the Black Bay Chronograph. They released this new version of the Black Bay Chronograph in two dull colour options, black and white respectively. Of those two versions, this white dull version is my personal favourite. 41mm case diameter, we have a 49.8mm lug to lug measurement, the thickness is 14.6mm including the dome sapphire crystal, the dome sapphire crystal has AR coating on the underside and the lug width is 22mm, there is a slight taper on the rivet bracelet from 22mm at the lugs down to the flip lock clasp which is signed with Tudor and if you look closely underneath the flip lock it has the shield emblem design incorporated into the clasp design which is very aesthetically pleasing. One minor criticism I have of the clasp is there are only three micro adjustment holes. Personally I would prefer to see some half links in the bracelets and also four or even five micro adjustment holes in the clasp and that would therefore allow for more adjustments on the clasp and the bracelet to fine tune the fit of the piece. But having said that, the bracelet is finished to a very high standard. Now one thing I really like about it is the use of female pivoted end links. And as you can see, this allows the end of the bracelet to articulate underneath the ends of the lugs. And that gives a better fit than using male end links which do give a longer lug to lug measurement. So I really like the female pivoted end links. It's something that Tudor do very well on the Black Bay. And this Black Bay Chronograph has very good quality female pivoted end links. They're some of the best I've seen in the watchmaking industry. So as I've discussed, this white dull version is my personal favourite. I like the silver applied indices and the silver snowflake hands, which are an iconic design aspect of Tudor pieces, including the Black Bay. The black subdials contrast very well with the white dial, and I think they've made the correct decision by citing the date complication at the 6 o'clock position because it retains the symmetry of the two subdials, and the dial layout is symmetrical, it's clearly legible, and it adds, adds to the functionality of the piece. The tachymeter scale is very clearly legible, and I like the matte black finish to the anodized bezel, which contrasts beautifully with the uh, Arabic numerals, and it's a very well executed aluminium bezel. Also like the domed sapphire crystal which projects above the tachymeter scale on the bezel. It's just an absolute delight to look at that domed sapphire crystal with its characteristic distortion. But it does benefit from AR coating on the underside. It does reduce the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver applied indices and the silver snowflake hands. With regards to the crown, it's embossed with the Tudor Rose, as you can see, done to perfection, coin edge finished, relatively low profile, so it's easy to grip, but it's low profile enough not to dig into the back of the hand when one bends the wrist, so it's very well designed, it's just the right size to be easy to grip, but also low profile enough not to dig into the wrist, so they've got the proportions correct. Screw down pushers which match the coinage finished screw down crown. So the screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters of water resistance. So let's test the crown action. 
absolutely silky smooth. There's no difference whatsoever between a Tudor crown action and a Rolex crown action. It really is very smooth. If you're familiar with Rolex twin lock or trip lock crowns, that is exactly the sensation one gets with a Tudor Black Bay chronograph crown, silky smooth thread action. In the first position, it's in the manual wind position, so one can manually wind the movements, which is the Calibre MT5813, to top up the power reserve to its maximum 70 hours. So it's an absolute pleasure to manually wind the movements, and one can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up to its maximum 70 hours. Absolute pleasure to manually wind. Pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication position and rotating it clockwise advances the date complication. If you look closely at the date complication at 6 o'clock, you'll see the quick set function working as one would expect. So absolute pleasure to use. Pulling it out to the final click position is the time setting position, and needless to say, the Calibre MT5813 is absolutely silky smooth. To set the time, rotating the hands in clockwise and anti-clockwise directions, it just feels nice and smooth. It's got a nice firm resistance to it, which you might be unfamiliar with. Personally, I like it, but it does take some getting used to, because it, some movements have a very light action to the time setting, but I like the firm resistance of the Calibre MT5813. It's a characteristic of it. One can feel the resistance of the gears and the movement. So good, solid, reliable, well-proven movement. Pushing it back in restarts the movement. And I'll just test the crown action, screwing it back in. Immediate pickup on the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the crown tube. 200 meters for a chronograph really is very impressive water resistance. Often chronographs such as the Speedmaster only have 50 meters, for example, and even the Daytona only has 100 meters of water resistance. So to get 200 meters from a chronograph piece, which isn't a dive watch, of course, really is very impressive. Screw down pushes. So let's, te let's test the action of the screw down pushes. Again, absolutely silky smooth. I've previously reviewed a Rolex Daytona and the screw down pushers on this uh, Tudor Black Bay chronograph feel exactly the same as on the Rolex Daytona. Very light resistance and they unscrew with no resistance um, whatsoever. So let's test the action. The top pusher activates the chronograph and you look at the chronograph second hand, you'll be see that it begins to sweep around the dial. Good positive click to the pusher. I would say that the Tudor Black Bay chronograph pushers have more resistance. They feel more spring-loaded than on the Rolex Daytona. On the Rolex Daytona, it's a lighter pusher action, just a delicate push. But with the Tudor Black Bay chronograph, one has to give it a good hard push. Now, I actually like that. It's got a good solid mechanical feel to it. One can feel these spring-loaded pushers are going to last a lifetime. So pressing the top pusher again stops the chronograph complication. Pressing the lower pusher activates the flyback complication and if you look closely at the chronograph second hand you'll see that it flies back to the 12 o'clock index on the dial and it resets perfectly with perfect alignment as one would expect. Screwing back down the pushers is very satisfying, no resistance whatsoever, identical to Rolex Daytona in terms of their action, just silky smooth threading. So very well executed crown very well executed screw down pushes and they all provide an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters as does the solid stainless steel screw down case back. The case back is undecorated, it's just brush satin finish, the circumference is engraved with the specification of the piece and it looks very similar to a Rolex Daytona case back, very low profile and we've got coin edge finishing to the circumference but it is finished to a high standard and as you can see as this is a brand new unworn 2021 piece it still has the protective film intact. The solid end links which are female pivoted end links as I've discussed are a good tight fit to the case and finish to perfection. Now with regards to the bracelet, it is uh, divisive because some collectors dislike the use of rivet links. They think the links spoil the look of the piece. They would prefer to see oyster links rather than rivet links. But however, Tudor are trying to retain their identity of the early uh, Tudor watches. And of course, rivet links were popular when the links were made from folded metal rather than solid stainless steel. So it does capture the essence of a vintage piece. Um, Personally, I like them. I also like oyster links, but it is subjective, of course. Um, some collectors dislike the rivet links, some collectors love them. I do like the female pivoted end links, and I do like the beautiful luster to the stainless steel. As you can see, it's very similar to 9040 oyster steel. It has a very similar luster to the stainless steel. 
just absolutely beautiful to look at. So the top side and underside are brass satin finish and that contrasts beautifully with the mirror polished flanks to the rivet links. Now with regards to the clasp, I personally would prefer to see it elongated and I would like to see four or five micro adjustment holes as I've discussed. But however, it is very well finished and I'll show you something which is one of my favourite aspects of this watch and I will also apply it to other watches such as the Black Bay and the Black Bay 58 which I've previously reviewed. If you look closely, there are four ceramic ball bearings. Now with Rolex clasp, they only have uh, oyster steel ball bearings, they don't use ceramic but Tudor deserve full credit because this is innovative. Ceramic ball bearings are of course harder wearing than oyster steel or indeed stainless steel 316L grades uh, ball bearings and they're going to last a lifetime. Ceramic is very hard and therefore they are not going to wear down. So this clasp with the four ball bearings made from ceramic is going to last a lifetime. It's always going to have the same positive clicking action which is very satisfying like when the watch was new. So in 10 or 20 or even 30 years, this clasp with the ceramic ball bearings is going to snap shut with that same positive click, just like when it was brand new. So I really like that about uh, Tudor watches. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet. I've simply taken the watch out of the watch box and I'm pleased to report that it is a perfect fit for my eight inch wrist, as you can see, without adding or removing any links. Good positive click to the flip lock on the on the clasp, although I would like to see it elongated. Now, one thing I really like about this piece is the proportions. They have got the proportions very well done very well because it's 41mm ahead of the piece, so it is a large piece with wrist presence. And it is a tall piece at 14.6mm, including the dome sapphire crystal. But they've made the correct decision by making the lug width 22 rather than 20. The 22mm lug width perfectly balances the 41mm head of the piece. And the wider bracelet, for example, this is wider than a Daytona bracelet at 22mm rather than the 20mm of the Daytona. The wider links in the bracelet mean they better balance the 41mm head of the piece. So it doesn't feel top heavy. If this were on a 20mm bracelet tapering down to 16 at the clasp, it would feel very unbalanced and top heavy. Now at 14.6 it is a tall piece and it is going to slip underneath shirt cuffs if you wear business shirts but however it is going to be more difficult to slip under a shirt cuff than a 13mm tall piece. It is noticeable the height of the piece and the flanks of the case do have tall slab sides as per the Black Bay 41mm. 185 grams with all the links in the bracelet so it is also a heavy piece. The heft is noticeable on wrist. Personally, I regard 40 and 41 millimeter pieces. The sweet spot for the heft is circa 150 grams on an oyster style bracelet. So at 185, it is a very heavy piece and that is notable. So I would say to you, this piece is best suited for collectors with a larger wrist of seven to eight inches. If you're a collector with a smaller wrist of six to seven inches, you may find the 14.6 millimeter height and also the 185 grams of heft. Of, of course, you will reduce that by removing four or five of the links from the bracelet, but nonetheless, it will wear to be a top heavy piece. So that's something to consider. You may want to wear it on a leather strap or a NATO strap to reduce the heft. Very aesthetically pleasing piece. It's got a relatively long lug to lug measurement of 49.8. Personally, I regard 48 millimeters to be the sweet spot, although 49.8 is close to it. It's only 1.8 millimeters longer. But again, really at 49.8, it is best suited to collectors with a seven to eight inch wrist rather than a six to seven inch wrist respectively. On my eight inch wrist, it does feel very comfortable, very balanced due to the flat low profile stainless steel screw down case back. And I do like the 22 millimeter lug width as I've discussed. It balances the bracelet with the head of the, head of the piece very well. Black subdials contrast very well with the white um, dial as you can see. And it's just an absolute delight to look at. I love the domed crystal. And it does capture the vintage aesthetic because they've chosen to use an aluminium bezel insert rather than ceramic. And also the rivet links and the bracelet complement the dome sapphire crystal and the aluminium bezel insert for the tachymeter. So it's just absolutely beautiful to look at. One of the best looking uh, Tudor watches ever made. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to its absolute maximum. 
Now I've got very high expectations of this piece. I've previously owned a Tudor Black Bay and I was very impressed with the loom. And I've also previously reviewed the Tudor Black Bay 58. And I, again, I was very impressed with the quality of the loom. So I'm hoping that this is going to also impress. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged. And as you can see, it is absolutely incredible. There is no difference whatsoever between the quality of Tudor Loom and also the quality of Rolex Chrome Light. This has got a characteristic green tone to it, which looks very similar to C3 Super Luminova, which of course is a personal favorite of mine, as you'll know from my previous reviews. The large loom plots on the snowflake hands allow for several layers of loom to be applied and also the thickness of the loom is also very thick. So the performance of the loom on the snowflake hands is exactly the same as on the Black Bay 58 and the Black Bay 41mm version. The applied indices also allow for large loom plots and having a triangle index on the dial at 12 o'clock gives good orientation. So it's a very well executed dial layout because of the symmetry and I would actually say that the performance of the loom on the snowflake hands and the applied indices on this Black Bay chronograph is superior to the Daytona because the Daytona's baton style hands with the smaller applied indices don't allow for the same area of plot of loom to be applied. So very aesthetically pleasing, continuing to glow for a good length of time and needless to say glowing incredibly brightly. Top quality loom and Tudor deserve full credit for not cutting any corners with regards to the performance of the loom used which as I've discussed looks very similar to C3 Super Luminova. So lastly let's discuss the movement because that is one of my favourite aspects of the piece. It's a reason alone to purchase this piece. The movement used in the Black Bay Chronograph is the Calibre MT5813 and that is based upon the architecture of the Breitling Calibre B01 which is a reliable well proven chronograph movement and it's very highly respected because of its accuracy and also its build quality. So the Calibre MT583 the architecture is very similar to the B01 but there are some notable enhancements. It's a column wheel and vertical clutch uh, chronograph movement. It has a silicon hairspring, 70 hours of power reserve, which is very impressive, 47 joules. It runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. And as you'll know from my previous reviews, 4 hertz is a personal favorite frequency for automatic movements. I regard 28,800 vibrations per hour to be the sweet spot. It is the perfect compromise between power reserve and accuracy. And also a characteristic of 4 Hz movements is they give a nice smooth sweep to the second hand. The stated accuracy of the Calibre MT5813 is plus 2 to minus 4 seconds per day, so it is COSC chronometer certified. I'm pleased to report that this one is running at plus 1 second per day when fully wound to its maximum 70 hour power reserve so it's an accurate movement it's reliable it's also highly anti-magnetic due to the use of a silicon hairspring and really i would argue that it is superior to the caliber b01 brightling movement which it is based upon there are some notable enhancements so reliable well proven accurate and the correct choice the caliber mt5813 is one of the best tudor in-house movements and it is of course um, based upon the B01 which in itself is an outstanding movement. So I really like that aspect. 70 hours of power reserve is very practical and uh, it's very accurate. This one's running at plus one second per day. So lastly I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price points. So six and a half thousand euro. Yes, I consider this to be excellent quality and yes, I consider it to be excellent value. This is a credible alternative to the uh, Breitling Navitimer or alternatively the Amiga Speedmaster. So within the high tier, you're going to be looking at those as considerations or alternatively the Zenith El Primero. This is significantly less, more or less expensive than a Rolex Daytona and of course the Rolex Daytona is incredibly difficult to obtain from Rolex authorised dealers. So the Tudor Black Bay chronograph really does sit in a very nice position in the high tier because at €6,500 significantly less expensive than a Daytona but one is getting 200 metres of water resistance and one is getting a 70 hour power reserve movement which is cost chronometer certified so all the benefits of a Daytona without the expense and without the difficulty of trying to purchase one 
from a Rolex authorised dealer or alternatively on the grey market at a premium over retail. So the Tudor Black Bay chronograph um, really does have a lot of merits and really very few negatives. As I've discussed, the only thing I would change about it is I would like to see the clasp lengthened and I would like to see four micro adjustment holes. Now having said that, Tudor have recently introduced the T-Fit clasp to their bronze version of the Black Bay and I'm hoping that they're going to introduce the T-Fit clasp to their other pieces in the Black Bay range because it is similar to a Rolex Glide Lock and that does enhance the Black Bay series. It will make it easy to adjust the bracelet on the fly. So that really is the only negative to the piece um, and as I've discussed the rivet links are subjective. Some collectors love them, some collectors dislike them um, but overall it is an outstanding piece and I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.